Hello everybody, this is Jerry Mateo within the DAW. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is sponsored by Pulsar Modular, and they've asked me to take a look at their P455 MDN sidecar. This is essentially a mix bus processing plugin, but it can be used on every channel because it's very CPU optimized, and honestly, it sounds really, really good. Now, this was a collaboration between Mark Daniel Nelson and Pulsar Modular, and if you don't know, Mark Daniel Nelson is a Grammy award-winning mixing engineer who's worked with many, many artists like Fleetwood Mac, Joni Mitchell, Jason Mraz, and many, many more. He also makes amazing video tutorials on the Produce Like a Pro YouTube channel. Now, several years back, Mark Daniel Nelson purchased an eight-channel API sidecar from the famous Sausalito record player. And he uses the 5500 EQs on this sidecar to actually mix his stems for his mix buses. He then mixes down into his AT101, which is an amazing Varimu bus compressor. It's essentially a Fairchild. And he uses his many different forms of ADD conversion and really gets amazing polished tones this way. Pulsar Modular has done an amazing job of recreating his signal flow and has even done very creative ways to modify some hiccups that you get when utilizing a 5500 style EQ. Now, just going over the basic interface, this is a very easy plugin to use. Starting off with your VU meters, you have input and output VU meters. White will be your input and red will be your output. You will also see that you have a raw plus input right here. Clicking it on will essentially incorporate whatever gain changes you do on the input knob. And if you shift click, it will actually do both at the same time. Under this, we have our input peak meter and where it says output, we actually have our output peak meter. This is a very fast and accurate meter. Next is your input gain, I've already mentioned that. This is a really powerful input gain. You're able to drive the plugin, and if you shift click, you can actually link the input and output controls. You can do the same thing to output, but keep in mind that when you release it, it will stop. Speaking of output meters, we're able to unlink them so they can actually work individually, and when you relink them, they stay incorporated like that. The bias control is going to control how much saturation you're allowing this plugin to get. Increasing it will essentially have the EQs and the internal circuitry have less headroom and basically helps them distort a little bit easier. Bringing it down will actually clean up the circuitry and make it a little bit cleaner. But keep in mind that you're pretty much always going to get some coloration with this unit. It will be very, very clean, but you will get at least a tiny bit of that analog goodness. The two and eight channel modes are actually emulating the two channel bus processing that you would get using only two channels of Mark Daniel Nelson's sidecar or all eight channels. This is going to give you a wider sound because you have a wider stereo image. And it's also incorporating the crosstalk and the saturation. It has a lot more coloration and has a much punchier tone. You're also able to modify which form of op amps you're using, either the original mod one or mod two, which is a different form of op amps. You can actually bypass that by just turning off the line amp, and this will bypass it even for the two channel mode. The analog controls are probably my favorite. You have two forms of Mark Daniel Nelson's uh, A to D conversion. First one is Willy. This is gonna be a more upfront, mid forward and aggressive style of ADD conversion, meaning you get a little bit more saturation and it definitely sounds a little bit more compressed. Atticus is actually gonna be a lot smoother and a lot less uh, aggressive with the dynamics. You definitely hear that for more dynamic content. This is a more natural sounding ADD. Personally, I love Willy on drums and I love Atticus on bass but it can always be mixed and matched depending on the song. The 5500 EQ, it's a 5500 EQ. Your high and low band can become a shelf or a bell. You'll have 12 dB of plus and minus gain. And like I said, Pulsar Modular's programmer has actually modified the way that the high and high mid uh, frequencies interact with the op amps and all of the emulated circuitry, giving you a really smooth top end that you don't get with the real hardware. The next thing is the times one times 0.5 and times 0.25. This is essentially how much gain you're allowing the EQ to have. Times one is plus and minus 12 dB. Well, half of that times 0.5 is giving you six dB. 0.25 is one quarter of that. So you are maxing out at three dBs of gain and you're able to really turn this into a mastering EQ. Your high and low pass filters work very easily. You simply just click on them. And then we have the output knob, which is going to just give us plus and minus 12 dBs of clean gain. 
The compressor section is a little bit different from Mark Daniel Nelson's own compressor, where he uses a AT101. He's actually given us a lot more flexibility here. The attack and release controls are completely just ambiguous. You don't know what they are. But what happens is when you change them internally, it will actually give you different compressor styles. You will have either a very mu, very slow and gentle. You have that punchy uh, API sound, or you can even get that really classic SSL style compression out of this. So play with these settings. You'll be able to hear a slight difference of everything going on when you start tweaking them. The ratios that we have here are two flavors. Ratio A, which is 1.2 to 1. This is basically non-existent. It's super, super subtle, very mastering grade. Or ratio B. Ratio B is, I would say, a little bit more aggressive at 1.8 to 1, but is also kind of a little bit gooier. I notice that you get more movement when you're using this. It kind of has that I'm compressing sound, where A has this you don't even hear me kind of tone going on to it. You can turn it on and off right here, and you have an internal sidechain to remove the low frequencies from triggering compression. This is at 80 hertz, I believe. Keep in mind that we have a global bypass and the bypass for each individual module right here, and we even have one up top where we also have a phase inversion knob. We have a gain reduction meter, and then we have our save default setup. If we do any changes and we save this, it will actually make whatever we have our new default. We have our menus, we can click between, then we have our A and B section, and we can copy A to B or B to A. The hamburger style menu will give us our licensing status, our user guides, our default sizing, audio dimming transition, which is basically when we switch between the algorithms, it'll either dim it or it'll leave it flat, and then our theme settings. We can save the location of this plugin in your DAW, basically it's positioning in your setup right here, and then you can resize your plugin right here. That's it for the overview. Let's go ahead and take a listen to this in this session. So I have an instance of the 455 on every single channel on my mix bus. My drums, bass, guitar, piano, effects, vocals, and the submix. And what I'm going to do is actually bypass each of them. And then I'm going to bring them in so you can hear how it sounds in this mix. So let's find a good place, maybe right here. And we'll take a listen to how it sounds on and then off. So remember, we will have on and off. We'll start off. Here we go. We can find a better place Somewhere where we belong We can find a better place Somewhere where we belong That's a pretty drastic difference, right? It's a huge difference and I'm not actually doing crazy changes, but I am trying to make this kind of audible. I want you to be able to hear this because, you know, YouTube compression and other stuff like that will make it a little bit harder to hear nuanced changes. So what I want to do is let's find a good part where the drums are really hitting a lot and let's take a listen to what this is doing, right? What we're going to do is bypass this and bring it back in and let's see what it sounds like. The kick drum has a lot more definition. The snare drum is a little scooped and has a little more snap in it. And I'm also hearing that there's a definition change. The image is a little bit wider and you're getting a little bit more dynamic control but in a very natural way. So let's see what we're doing. So what I'm hearing is when I bypass the line amps, the resonance in the low end of the kick drum seems to go away and it doesn't have as much of a snappiness to it, which is really, really cool. The next thing is that I have noticed that when I change the A to D modes, Atticus has a really nice deep tone and it's very natural sounding. It kind of polishes things off. Whereas Willy is a lot more aggressive. I'm hearing more distortion and more saturation in the snare and kick drum. Two channel mode is kind of doing a similar thing where it's making it tighter and bringing it all together where there's a less sense of depth. I like 
how the eight channel mode makes it sound like there's a drum kit being played. It's, it's moving. It almost sounds like there's space. It's really, really cool. And next is the EQ. Let's take a look at this EQ and see what it's doing. Now this EQ is doing quite a bit. I am shelving everything above 15K. I'm ducking down about two dBs of 800, and then I'm using the uh, low mid bell to cut away at 240. I'm then doing a shelf at 100, and I'm filtering out anything under 40 hertz. This is essentially gonna give me the ability to kind of shape this a little bit differently. And then it's going into the compression. I'm using the ratio B, a slow attack, a fast release, and let's just hear what this is doing. If you listen to it, it's really controlling the snare drum. That's that's what I'm working on. It's it's working on controlling the dynamics of the snare drum, which is fantastic. Now let's move on to the bass. The bass is going to be pretty simple. I'm using this in a much more aggressive manner. I'm using a slow attack, a fast release, in ratio B, diming the threshold. And then I am doing 4 dBs at uh, 1.5K, boosting 2 dBs at 5K, cutting 4 dBs at... 240 and then boosting on a shelf at 100. This is by 6 dBs. And then I'm cutting anything under 40 hertz. I also have the bias all the way up. I'm using two channel mode and then I have the input cranked. It's adding a nice very tame amount of distortion, while also kind of controlling the dynamics very, very well. The EQ moves that I'm doing are kind of making it sound like it's it's a rounder and shinier style uh, bass guitar, where it has a nice fat bottom that's kind of controlled in the lower mids, and then it has a nice sheen that's kind of cutting through. Let's take a listen to the guitar bus. This is gonna be pretty simple. We're cutting at 80 hertz. We're cutting a lot of low end from 100 hertz at a shelf and 180. We're using a decent amount of really fast compression, and then we are making it up all in the gain. I have the bias all the way up. I'm in two channel mode, and I'm using Atticus with mod one for the uh, op amps. So pretty good. You can hear that I'm doing a lot of dynamic control, but I'm also making up for it with the makeup gain. So it's doing a pretty good job. The next thing I want to go over is going to be the vocal bus. And that is because this is a very, very audible change. Uh, if you see here, we're using this in 0.25. So this is only doing half a dB increments. So we're maxed out at negative three dBs of gain. And we're cutting 200. We're cutting 500, we are cutting 800, and then boosting about, what, 2.5 dBs at a shelf at 12.5K. We have a decent amount of compression being used. We're going for like a medium fast to a really fast release, uh, and we are just driving it in 8-channel mode using Willy. Now, this is because I want more upfront vocals. I'm okay with getting a little bit more saturation because I want this to stand out. I don't care to brag about how many hoes I've been with and all the diamonds in my pendant. I want a wife and a family, grow food on some land, learn how to estate plan, build trust I can hand down to the people that descend from me. I feel an energy shift in what's desired by the conscious collective, now admired, respected. Art that comes from the heart is once again accepted, written with pain running through veins. Now this is pretty audible. It's really doing a decent job of cleaning it up. It sounds like I've taken the wool out of the front of it, right? Next, and finally, we have the mix bus. This is literally just getting rid of some of the excessive high-end because I'm cranking high-end everywhere. I'm getting rid of more 500 and then a little bit more of 300 on a shelf, 40 hertz uh, roll off, and then I have this at 0.5 mode. So these are only 1 dB increments. I'm literally doing 1 dB here and there. We have this in two-channel mode. I'm using Atticus because I really like the way that it sounds. And then I'm just touching this with the compressor. Ratio A, and I'm only doing about 0.7 dBs of gain reduction. I don't care to brag about how many hoes I've been with. 
and all the diamonds in my pendant. I want a wife and a family, grow food on some land, learn how to estate plan, build trust I can hand down to the people that descend from me. Feel an energy shift, and what's desired by the conscious collective. Spy now we might respect it. Art that comes from the heart is once again accepted. Written with pain, running through veins like it's injected. Love poured into verses, bridges in other sections. My heart is big and not to be messed with like the state of Texas. But still got a sig in a 40, that's a Smith and Wesson. Ain't talking cereal when I say I had three bowls for breakfast. Since and there you go. That's a pretty huge difference. Like, extremely huge. And it's really subtle things. Like I said on my final mix bus, I think at most I'm doing a 2 dB change. And I'm using two-channel mode. Mainly because I like the cohesion. I noticed two-channel mode kind of does like this uh, slight compression and it has a little bit more of an upfront sound. And then I use Atticus because Atticus seems to add this like low frequency thing to it. I don't know what it's doing, but it's kind of adding a depth to it. I really like it. And it's just subtle changes here and there. The compression, super subtle. I have just hear that it's kind of bringing things together a tiny bit. And all my other mix bus channels, of course, I'm doing things a little bit more aggressively at times, except for on the vocal bus. But if you hear it, everything has this place and everything is doing something and it's doing it really, really well. And that's going to be it for this video. I have to add this. I wouldn't have taken the sponsorship if I wasn't impressed with this plugin. I really think the high frequencies sound great on this. I love the flexibility and I actually use the EQ constantly. I have it all over my session uh, everywhere. It's a fantastic EQ. And I kind of wasn't really paying much attention to the email when I first got it. But after I downloaded the plugin, I was beyond impressed. So I will leave a link down below to Pulsar Modular's website and the YouTube channel where I will be doing a video checking out the 450 EQ. That's going to be a little bit more in depth where I'm going to show you how the EQ sounds. I wasn't really focusing on that here because, well, this is doing mix bus stuff. We're just kind of gently nudging here and there. Anyway, this is German Tell with I will see you guys next time. Bye.